Is the Jeep Grand Cherokee WJ the best budget overland vehicle you can buy? Well, in this video, we're gonna take a look at this 20-year-old Jeep and see if it is. Welcome to Trail Recon, I'm Brad, and today in the garage, I have a 1999 Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo WJ that my oldest son, Devin, recently purchased off Craigslist for $2,000. That's right, I said $2,000 for this really nice Jeep. You'd be hard pressed to get on the internet and find any nice cars for $2,000, let alone one in this good a condition and with these capabilities. Now, if you search for a 99 to 04 Jeep Grand Cherokee, you're gonna get a lot to choose from because there's quite a few out there and they're very budget friendly. During production of the WJ model Jeep Grand Cherokee, Jeep produced over 1.4 million of these things, and there are so many still out on the road because Jeep did a great job of building these really well. And most of the folks that bought these were families, so these never saw much off-road use and were in pretty good condition, like this one. Now my son bought this from a family that used it for a while and then it eventually became the two teenage daughters vehicle to get to and from school and to and from work and the dad did a great job of taking care of this because he wanted to make sure that his daughters had a good vehicle to drive. So this one has been taken really good care of. This Grand Cherokee is the Laredo trim model, which is the base trim model. You're not going to get a whole lot of extras in this version. If you wanted the higher end one, you got to get the Limited, which had a whole lot more bells and whistles on the inside. And on the exterior, it didn't have this naked plastic. It was actually painted all the way around, which looked a little bit nicer. Now, this originally sold for around $27,000 in this 4x4 form. And I'll tell you, go look at a Grand Cherokee today and the base models are starting at about 35 grand. Now, this was a Grand Cherokee and it was a higher end utility vehicle. But by today's standard, there's nothing grand about this. It's actually pretty small. And as far as high end goes, well, it's pretty basic inside. You see the size and capabilities of the Grand Cherokee, I think make it perfectly suited for overland travel. Now this is only 181.5 inches long, 72.3 inches wide, and this Jeep only weighs 3,960 pounds, making it shorter, narrower, and lighter than a brand new 2018 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited. This is not some behemoth vehicle that's not suited for off-road capabilities. Plus, the wheelbase is only 105.9 inches long, and the really cool thing in stock form, this has got 9.1 inches of ground clearance. That's pretty respectable. Now, the approach angle and departure angles are not that impressive, but the good news is there is a lot of aftermarket support for these, so being able to lift them and increasing that clearance and adding some larger tires is very easily done. Now this Jeep came standard with 28 inch street tires on 16 inch rims. And you can stuff a 29 inch tire on here without any issues, but probably what we're gonna do is get like a two inch budget boost or spring lift, and that will allow us to put some more aggressive off-road tires, like a 31 with some nicer rims. That's gonna suit my son's needs very well. You know, this is gonna be a daily driver, but we wanna take it out and have a little bit of fun with it. Now, if you wanna go bigger lift and bigger tires, you can do that, but that's gonna add a lot more complexity to your suspension and you're gonna have to do a lot more different upgrades. Now, behind these tires are some solid axles. Now, you won't find solid axles on today's Grand Cherokees and I think for an off-road vehicle, solid axles are the way to go. Now, these are not the Dana 44s that you would desirably want on an off-road vehicle. In the rear, there's a Dana 35 and in the front, it's a Dana 30 and we do have a 37 three gears, which is gonna push this thing down the road with those bigger tires, no problems. But the great thing is, is upgrading those solid axles just to stiffen them up a little bit should be very easy. And as long as we don't go crazy with adding massive tires, those solid axles should hold up just fine. Now under the hood, we have got the famous inline six four liter motor that's putting out 195 horsepower and 230 pound feet of torque. Now the Grand Cherokee did come with an optional eight cylinder motor, which is gonna give you a whole lot more horsepower if you want it, but 
They typically were not as reliable as this motor here. These things are almost bulletproof. This Jeep has 199,000 miles on it, and honestly, I didn't have any questions buying an engine with that many miles because of these things will run for a long time. Plus, they're super easy to work on yourself. The parts are very easily to obtain, and they're relatively cheap. So I think this is an ideal motor for what we're gonna be using it for. It's gonna be very reliable. Now, we have encountered just a couple little electrical gremlins that my son and I have to sort out, but this was a $2,000 vehicle. I can live with doing a little bit of work. Now inside the Grand Cherokee, everything is pretty basic by today's standards, but for being 20 years old, just about everything in here works really well. Plus, it's really comfortable. These seats are really nice. I would not be unhappy in a long trip sitting in this seat. You've got a lot of room in here. The steering down the road is nice and firm. It's not harsh and the suspension is good. I mean, it's not a sports car, but it's not floating down the road either. All the gauges are working very well. They're very simple. All the buttons and knobs are easy to access. Plus you've got a couple little power ports down here to charge some things up. You've got a place to put your phone. You've got a cup holder. You've got a nice little storage here in the center console. The layout is just very easy to use. Now in the center here, uh, we've got the shift lever to the transfer case. And this is what's called their select track transfer case. It's an NV242 transfer case. You've got two wheel drive, four wheel drive part time, four wheel drive full time, and four low. The four low is gonna give us a 2.72 to one ratio, which is perfect for what we'll be using this vehicle for. Now hopping in the rear of the Jeep, I'll say it actually has quite a bit of room back here. I'm six foot two and I've got plenty of leg room, shoulder room, and the seats are very comfortable. There's a little cup holder down here, but the only thing it doesn't have back here is any rear air vents. You're kind of dependent on air coming from the front of the vehicle. But otherwise, you know, I would be okay spending a few hours in the back here lounging around while somebody was driving on a long trip. And back here is where I think this vehicle really shines as far as overlanding is concerned because you could easily throw a family of five in here and all their gear back here. You have a ton of storage space. Throw in the tents, sleeping bags, food, you know, stoves, whatever you needed back here, you've got a ton of room. Plus, it's just very practical for daily use to have all this storage space. Those seats will lay down and give you additional space. You've got some tie downs back here. And I like that the spare tire is accessible from the top that makes things really easy. You know, this is a good overland foundation. If you really wanted to get crazy, you could, you know, put a fridge and a slider back here, build some drawers. I mean, the sky is the limit. We've got plans to do a couple little things, but I love having this much storage back here. Plus, additionally, back here in the rear, we have a trailer hitch, so this can tow up to 5,000 pounds in the inline six, which is a really nice capability. If you're somebody that likes to go you know, on long trips and tow a trailer, this Jeep will do it for you. So what are my son's plans for the Jeep that he has named Roxy? And the reason he named her Roxy was because the minute he saw her, that song by the police, Roxanne, you don't have to turn on the red lights. I shouldn't ever sing on the channel, but that's the song that came to his head the minute he saw the Jeep and so he named her Roxy. You know, he's gonna keep things very conservative with her. The plan was not to even buy another vehicle, but he had an older car that we had already thrown a ton of money at and it wouldn't smog, and so we just didn't wanna throw any more money at it, so it was time to get something else. Plus, when he was with me to Moab and Colorado earlier this year, he just got the bug and he wanted to get an off-road vehicle. So. We're gonna keep things very mild and sensible. This has to be a vehicle he can drive to and from college, to and from work, a daily driver, but have some nice adventures and follow along with me when we go some places. So we're gonna make sure that it's got a little bit of capability, a little bit of lift, some nice tires, and it definitely needs a good detailing. You know, the paint's not very nice, the, the uh, headlights need to be cleaned up. A lot of work that we're gonna do, just little things here and there to make it a little bit nicer. It should be a good project. Not that I need another project. And this is not gonna be a full-blown build series on the channel here either, guys. I have too much to do already. But you are gonna see this in the garage from time to time and you will see it out on the trail. 
So I just wanted to take a moment just to introduce the Jeep to you. Now, I think that if you are on a budget, and I get this question often, and you're looking to start overlanding, I think this is a great platform to begin with because it's a very capable vehicle and you've got a lot of space. I think it's something you should consider. I'd like to know from you what you think in the comments down below. You think this is a good overland vehicle or you think there's another one out there that's a better choice? You let me know. And if you're visiting Trail Recon for the first time, I'm gonna leave a couple of videos here that I think you'll really enjoy. Go check those out. I really hope that you've enjoyed this video. Please remember to travel the trails responsibly. Thanks for watching.